What is good? We're back. We got a tripod. Got old Big D. How you doing, dude? Tripod, fresh crack. Got Pulled the- out my, I don't know, 12-year-old Houston Texans hat again for the, the Stroud uh, performance. So do, doing good, man. Doing good. How about you? Good, good, good. Mr. Jason, how you doing? I won't complain. Mr. Jason. <laughs> That's what your daughter calls me. That's what I call everybody, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Whoever. Mr. Jason? <laughs> All right. So, today, right now, we're going to talk about some skyrocketing must trade for. No, you don't, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. <laughs> All right. Uh, but we're going to talk about some guys who are, who are really shooting up the charts. I guess it could be sort of like a rankings discussion here, but want to give some people their due of, of maybe, you know, climbing back up the charts. Maybe some of those guys have never been there before. Maybe some of those guys have maybe re-solidified their position or maybe increased a little. So I think first and foremost, we can we can go ahead and and, and throw Dalton Kincaid out there and, and we could throw the party for him because he's he's here um officially and um i think the fantasy receipts guys could probably do some digging because there is probably <laughs> they wouldn't have to dig a lot i mean a lot of the smartest guys in fantasy available who staunchly told you to never ever 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 just like taylor swift getting back together with tight ends and that you could just trade for him the following year uh, because, you know, you just wait, you draft it. You don't, you just let everybody else draft him and then just wait a year and buy him. Well, that never works. Um, you know, very, very rarely have I seen after one bad season, somebody just trade away their first round tight end that they just picked up and they had really high hopes for. There are some people who will do that, who, who panic really quickly, but, uh, you know, and I know that there is some history that suggests that, but in this case, I know there was at least half of the industry mock that we did, which some of those guys were a lot of talking heads. As a matter of fact, I've seen some of them post that how good Dalton Kincaid is that he's a stud, and I hope you took him, even though he said the complete fucking opposite on this show. You could find it. Yeah, we when we did our industry mock, it's 1.5 tight end premium, and that wasn't good enough for them. That's not tight end right. premium for those guys. It's got to be two. If it's, so two, it's two, then if it's two. But, then. So nobody that was in on the whole analytics of not taking a tight end wanted to take Kincaid or Laporta, any of them boys. Except for um, the, the Zoltan. I think he was in. He's more of an analytical guy. Sure, but uh, he's, he was, so, he's a weird one that loves tight ends. Yeah. So <laughs> Kincaid's in there. He's really, you know, really making making his presence felt. The, the absence of Knox is, has certainly propelled Kincaid into uh, a target machine, which uh, odd that it took – Knox to be out for this to happen because we've never seen Knox quite used the way that we're seeing Kincaid being used and, and it just seems like him and Josh you know they got a thing going on like Mrs. Jones um, <laughs> you know it's 26 targets and 23 receptions in the last three games second most targeted tight end in the last three games uh, and that's when we're talking premium that's what we want and even if it's just 1.5 the, the volume is why you wanted a guy like Dalton Kincaid because you thought he could be the number two in the pecking order, um, w- which is why it was okay to spend that first rounder on him because he is such a good receiver. Um, you know, and you could point to Kyle Pitts not working out, and it did work out the rookie year, and the value stayed strong. And, yeah, has it worked out? No, but guess why? Like, you're seeing right now how why everybody's so mad at Arthur Smith. Why Kyle Pitts isn't working out? When Matt Ryan was your quarterback, guess what? It worked out. Yeah, well, John o. Smith is fucking working out, so. Good. Exactly. Well, exactly. <laughs> jo- so Brees Hall or B. John Robinson isn't working out either. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's, it, it's, it's not, it's, it's not the player, it's the situation. Um, and, and, and I thought, you know, obviously it wasn't the player in Kincaid that, that couldn't work out. It was a little bit more of the situation that got freed up when Knox comes back. We'll see. But I, I think at that point, the damage is probably going to be done somewhat and, and it's going to be hard to get. Kincaid back off there and it just seems like him and Josh uh, are fairly comfortable um, and, and going to continue to have a pretty big target share in this offense so skyrocketing uh, value for Kincaid y- your thoughts Big D he's, he's made it he, he's he's there he's he's been a center of the offense and it's not like the Bills have been playing um, I know you just pulled it down but it's not like they've been playing scraps I mean he's he's performing at a at a, at a great clip I don't think that 
my expectation of him would be to have all these targets just based off of how Buffalo was set up, right? Even with an ox injury, like, but now looking at it, it's, it, you, you kind of alluded to it, like cats out of the bag. I don't know how they can get away from it. Right. I don't know how they can go back, bring in Knox back, trying to put Kincaid into a, to a different, different spot. I mean, the offense is moving. Um, there's something, something to say about the chemistry bef- between him and Allen. And, um, and yeah, I mean, he's, he's number, you said it number two behind Hawk, I believe in, in tight end. Um, and tight end targets Last three and games, yeah and what is he on his team that was um i had that pulled up a minute ago and then i went back and now the internet's moving slow so he he wasn't very far off from being second or third on the team in targets you know all already um yeah so I'll, I'll get that whenever it pulls up, but it's it's not going. Yeah, so the last three games, he's like 8.67 targets, and only Diggs is higher uh, at 10, 10 right. targets a game. So, yeah, I mean, he's 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 solidified the number two pass catching role on that team, or or maybe not solidified, but he, he's damn well got a, a, a stranglehold on it. And, right. Yeah, and, who do you uh, want to throw it up to when you need something, Kincaid or Gabe Davis? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I mean Gabe. Gabe was was has has had some you know pretty pretty strong games this season. It's kind of he's kind of volatile up and down. And you know yeah. this last game he was goose egged and 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 um, Kincaid goes you know has a big game. Put certainly put me in a deficit. I'm playing Big Co in a league, um, and now I need 23 from Brees to get the the win. Uh, whereas you know it, if if Kincaid is just kind of middled there and, and gets 12 or whatever, then, you know, I, I got a decent shot. Now 23 is, you, you know. Well, it's incredible good. what Kincaid's been doing. And, like, for him to be a rookie, it's even more incredible. Like, that's – it's just you don't see a ton of this pop this early. And you're seeing it from Laporta, too. He's What he's doing is incredible. And right. Almost unbelievable. Right. But we're – uh, Laporta's already skyrocketed now. Right. Now so, Kincaid's well, catching up. Right. I, so rankings discussion: Laporta or Kincaid? Sticking with Kincaid here. You know, I, I think I I don't think there's a wrong answer uh, currently. I think you know Laporta's shown you what you want to see. He's he seems to be basically there. They're kind of number two uh, in targets. We'll see how the Gibbs situation kind of plays out here. Uh, if he can maybe scoop some targets away from, from somebody. I don't think it's going to be Amon Ra. He, he's going to get all of his pretty much week in, week out, it seems. I don't think there's much to worry about there. Jamison Williams, has he come alive? Is that, does that hurt a little bit of Laporta taking maybe a, a drive or two away here or there from a long play? Um, you know, so that's interesting. But, you know, Kincaid, for me, uh, I think is, is just, especially tight end premium, I think there's a hair potentially more volume over there for, for Kincaid. So... And like I said, pre pre draft that was my, and then post draft that was my uh, standings too. Um, so I'm sticking with Kincaid there. So I would I would go pretty close, same tier I would say, uh, but I'll I'll go Kincaid first in that tier. Big D. Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna echo what you said. Is is um, if I have Laporta, I don't think I'm trading for Kincaid, and if I have Kincaid, I don't think I'm trading for Laporta. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And so what that tells me is they're in the same tier, and and I think. Post draft, post you know, post let's say June, May, I think Kincaid was higher than Laporta, um, and I don't think it's really changed. The Laporta had some has had some great run, but I agree with you that Kincaid I think is in the better situation, um, just from a ceiling perspective because of how well Denver's been compiled and what they have going on there. I think um, you know when you look at Buffalo. You think of Diggs, he's going to be around for, you know, next year for sure. But I think he's getting, you know, he, he's starting to scratch the surface on age discussions, maybe maybe not quite yet. And he's still playing at an all pro level. But um, all the other ancillary pieces that they have there, including their run game is is is, a, you know, is most of the time a question mark of who's right. going to it's not a question mark of somebody's going to get volume. It's normally just a question mark of who that is and how much volume. Right. And so. Where um, on the flip side with with Kincaid, you know, you know that you know, or at least it will be interesting. That I think the barometer test will be interesting when Knox comes back, mm-hmm. and just to see what you know, what what does that mean? Do they go into more twelve uh, personnel? Do that you know how how does that change the scheme, or do they stick with what they've been doing and and Knox just doesn't get on the field, or do they you know like that part will be interesting to me. But I, I agree with you. Yeah, Kincaid and Laporta are um, two great. Uh, end of the end of the first to, to late mid uh, first picks that you could have got. And um, 
and and should have got because you know I now looking at Quentin uh, Quentin Johnston and some of those other other pieces that were in that ballpark. I mean, I think yeah. you're 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 feeling great if you drafted the uh, if you drafted the big men. So right. Um, so would would you say that that. Kincaid um, and Laporta really uh, we started off as a Kincaid discussion skyrocketing kind of deal here. Well, are they in the Andrews Hawkinson tier or right? So I was gonna like one more question would be like you got you got Kelsey and Hawk and Andrews. Are they are they next? And and yeah, I mean, I think they're in that tier. I think I think for me, I'm probably obviously Kelsey's been great, but I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna throttle Kelsey down one because it's just it just feels like at any point it can come. Uh, you're 34 years old. Uh, yeah, we just got a youth fountain over there. Oh, I mean, gr- great, but I, I, <laughs> I think I would rather have those guys in dynasty long term, Andrews and Hawk, over Kel- Kelsey at this point. So I, I guess has is Kincaid up in there, up in their area yet, or do we need a little bit more time to to solidify them being worthy of in that tier? Or are they yeah, the is, next tier? Is he like him or Pitts? It's like because Pitts would be the next guy in the tier. I mean, I think you got to right now. You got to put, you got to put those two guys ahead of Pitts for sure. If someone's going to throw him the ball, right? Jesus, put, put yeah. Pitts looking in at the, in the Kincaid situation. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, don't touch me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in July, I had uh, I had Andrews, and then I had Hawk, Goddard, Pitts, and then I had Kincaid as the as the the next tier, top of the tier three. Mm. He's definitely moved into that tier two, and he's he's knocking on the door in tier one. Yeah. And maybe there isn't a tier one now. Maybe Andrews has come down a little bit. Um, uh, maybe Hawk has jumped up a little bit. But yeah, just just looking at what I had in July. Um, and and Laporta was uh, top of tier four for me, so Laporta has definitely jumped up into the the whole discussion there, and uh, and and I would say that they're right they're right there. I mean they're you know they're so young and they're producing like I don't know how you can right. I don't know how anyone can justify them not being in the top one or two tiers of yeah. the tight end ranks um, at this point. I would agree. It's you know it's it's almost like you you know. You should have spent a first round rookie draft pick for them in tight end it's, premium. It's almost like you should have done that. Uh, you know, it just, I will hit that one more time. Like th- th- there was, I saw nobody trading for Kincaid. I saw not a nary trade go down in the. <laughs> not uh, a nary. <laughs> nah, no. <laughs> not a nary, nah, not a trade. <laughs> no, you say that now, not like you do. I don't know what it means, but it sound good. Um, I hadn't seen one of, a, a no, single nah, trade go down in any of the leagues that I'm in. With involving Dalton Kincaid and tight end premium at all. Nobody was like, oh, he's not playing well. I'm going to ship him out. I got to try to get what I can back. Nobody did that. I, right. I also didn't see any trades involving Trey McBride this past year of him, you know, unless somebody overpaid or got him in a bigger deal. Nobody like, you know, what were you going to do? Trade it, trade it two for him, which is basically where he went. I mean, you know, nobody was really doing that. Uh, you know, nobody was giving him up for a three and nobody was trading a two and it was equal. And now Trey McBride's. You know, good patience on things, and Trey, Trey McBride showed some spots last year. Patience, Laporta was good. Not, you know, Mayer's the odd man out right now. And if if Mayer doesn't work out, then I guess they have you know a leg to stand on to say that hey, we still you still shouldn't do that. And it's like, you know, yeah, I guess Ingram and uh, OJ Howard and it was Evan Ingram, OJ Evan Ingram, Howard, OJ Howard and, and, and Joku, and yeah, OJ Howard didn't work out. Got hurt a few times. Didn't work out. It's been a long road with Joku. He seems like he's going to be just fine. He's and Evan there. Ingram is, is tight end five or six right now in a system where they actually are have a decent offense and he's healthy. Yeah, did it take a while? Yes. Should that be used as an example? No, not really. It could be used in the, the other team's favor of, of that old adage of just let somebody else draft him and trade for him. But I, I think that's silly. Like, it takes a while for somebody to want to come. You know, I saw no... Not a whole bunch of Kyle Pitts trades after that first or second year. Now people are starting to loosen up on Kyle Pitts, you know, a, a little bit. And, you know, I'm still fine with buying because I still believe in the talent. And all we can hope for is that Arthur Smith loses every game from here on out. And yeah, yeah. get rid of him. And he just is a, is a thing of the past. So, um, oh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think traditionally the um, the tight end position, right, was 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 – like Laporta and Kincaid are different than what a traditional tight end was. So when right. we looked in the past and we looked at analytics, or if you're just using your analytics and you're looking at hit rates and you're looking at all those different metrics, I mean, you've got to realize that the game adjusts and it, and it, and it changes and the people and positions are adjusting and changing. And so when you look at Kincaid and you look at Laporta, you don't think of them as, and they can block. I'm not saying that they're not 
bad or, or, or below grade blocking tight ends, but they're also not, that's not what they were drafted for. They were right. drafted to be an offensive weapon. And so when, you know, so it's just, it's a lesson to everybody, um, including myself. It's like, you know, there are, it's good to look at trends. It's good to look at history. Sometimes history repeats itself, but also things evolve as well. And so you've right. got to look at it from a holistic approach and just kind of, a, um, uh, attack, um, attack the weak spots that, that you see. And, and, you know, we are, we are tooting our horns here because of how, how we, how we felt on these tight ends. But, but, but if we don't, you won't know that we did that. And now you're listening and now, you know, so there you go. Right. And I'll, I'll tell you all the thing. I, you know, we talk about shit we get wrong all the time and say we get wrong all the time. I'm not saying I don't get wrong. I, it's mostly just the staunch way that people approach things, which is probably the reason why fantasy receipts goes after so many people, because the, you talk like a bunch of sure assholes and then yeah. get mad that somebody's cyberbullying you like a 12 year old because uh, somebody's talking shit about your bad takes. It's like, dude, have you, did you never hang out with your older brother or your boys? Like <laughs> as soon right. as you start bitching like a little baby and, and, and basically say, no, they're bullies. Like, yeah. you don't think that's going to lead to them talking more shit to you? Like, dude, just be like, ha, that was, that was dumb. My bad. Ha ha. Well, you know, what an idiot. You know, I, I try, I got, got to adjust from there or, you know, it's just, just silliness. So I, I think it's, it's the approach that bothers me and the way that, that people say it with certainty that, oh, yeah, we could just disregard those guys because they're tight ends, so get rid of them. It's stupid. That's yeah. just a I got a lot approach. of problems with you people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So speaking of trends and other things, let's go to the next guy who's skyrocketing up. He, he's faced some scrutiny for the first uh, few weeks. Uh, but let's go Gibbs here, uh, you know, and whew, dodged some bullets at that combine weigh-in because uh, <laughs> there's no way he could have been good if he was two pounds less. Um, and, you know, I think you touched on something there interesting that, um, you know, adapting to what's going on uh, in the league. Yeah, you're looking at overall trends, but adaptability and, and kind of where we're going, I think everybody is just getting a little bit lighter. Like, there's not big linebackers anymore. Like, it's probably okay for running backs and wide receivers to be a little bit smaller at this point because I think as a whole, a of the guys out on the field are getting maybe the aren't size like girth rather is not you know <laughs> something that is coveted anymore. You might you might throw a giant human being in there to plug a run gap, but for the most part, your linebackers aren't you know these massive run stopping guys. They're guys that you want to be able to cover the pass and then when you can get in there, blitz and tackle, that's when you're a really elite linebacker yeah, it's not about the girth with the linebackers right. it's how you use them <laughs> right um <laughs> so you know i i i find that interesting and i think we're seeing you know some success with some lighter guys here and i think that's something a narrative that we may be able to put to rest wide receiver wise it's not nearly as physical as it used to be we can get rid of all this historical data you know <laughs> and, and then some of it is just that changed. like it's things change um mm -hmm. and and i get it and they're all markers for things and i completely am on board with it all it's the attitude in which it's spoken about that drives me in fucking sane <laughs> like there's no way that it could happen uh and it happens all the time um so gibbs another one was was being crushed there now the last you know two three weeks he's at 27.6 and 29.9 obviously then the oh. bye week this week um given the touches now we, we have an interesting thing here because I want to kind of I, I want to rank him. You get Monty coming back, and this is a you know this is a Monty hashtag yeah. we, hashtag we love Monty Pod. Um, mm -hmm. Where 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 does Gibbs kind of factor in here? Uh, because I, I do think people again because this is fantasy and people play Dynasty like redraft a lot. And if 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 Gibbs didn't come in and wasn't immediately getting all the carries and and scoring twenty seven points, then he was a bust. And what did you do? Um, I, I don't know that that was ever the expectation for me for him to come in and just be a hot and heavy carry kind of guy. Uh, at, at, but he wasn't necessarily getting maybe all of the receiving and all the touches that you wanted to see. How do you see this playing out as it comes back? And, and where do you where where would you have him? Rank? Is he is he RB three, four, five? Uh, is not above Brees or Bijan at this point, right? No, you're st still no, keeping not Bijan up there. Yeah, I, I'm still. How about we're CMC? just talking about regular, um, uh, you know, our, our startup uh, rankings. I would go Bijan, I'd go Brees, I'd go JT, and I'd go CMC before I'd get to the Gibbs Gibbs is, level. Is, so. has, has ET now passed Gibbs? Yeah, that's a good question. Like, would you would you tur turn ET into Gibbs? Could you turn ET into Gibbs? Because I think I'd be down to do that. You get three years younger. 
And the same like explosion? You may have a bit of nuisance that you thought you were going to have with ET in your way now for Gibbs though, right? I mean, I don't I don't think they're just going to magically stop using Monty, right? I mean, yeah. right. Yep. So that's the rub, right? Yeah, I would say I I want to see uh, kind of the same thing with the Knox thing. I I I really like Monty. I still think he's he's higher up in my rankings, my my like regular you know, uh, uh, startup rankings. Um, he's like in a tier four range for me because I think that they're still going to use him, and that's definitely going to eat into Gibbs. Um, I, I think I would rather have ET over, over Gibbs at this point, just because of the way the usage is. And I don't see the offense in Jacksonville changing too much where I can definitely see the offense in Detroit changing when, when Monty comes back into the fold, but but it's a good problem to have. I, I, I don't think uh, that me saying all those things doesn't mean that I'm out on Gibbs. I definitely am, am pretty high on him. Like I said, he, he was um, he was kind of uh, right there. I had uh, Achan uh, in a tier by himself because I just don't know what to do with him. And I know he's been mm -hmm. hurt and I know he's off everyone's radar at this point. But but he's just so he's so electric and he can score so many points in, in, in like two minutes in a game that it's right. it's hard for me not to have him way up there. But but yeah, I mean, I think from the Gibbs perspective, I'm really glad that he broke out. I'm really, you know, for the owners that were really high on him, I really think that he's going to have some sustainable value. But but I do think Monty's going to come in and, and take over um, a more predominant role than everyone thinks he's going to. Um, yeah. that, now, that's not to say that they haven't really had a wide receiver step up um, outside of, you know, obviously Sun God gets his, but they really haven't had a wide receiver step up. Um, Laporte has been taking some of that. So could that... Um, back to our tight end discussion we just said is like can you know what are they yeah. going to do when they have um, they Monty get come DPJ back is too yeah they did get D line. DPJ yep for for a little bit of depth so there could could be something there so so I think Detroit's very interesting to watch but again I, I do I still think Gibbs is going to get his he's definitely going to get his in the passing game and and have some um, relevance as we go on Gibbs or A chain Gibbs. I don't care. I mean, like if I have one, I'm not trading for the other. Um, if Same I'm drafting and they're both on the board, um, I don't know. That's, that's I, same tier yeah. is fine. How about Jacobs same tier. or Barkley? Gibbs, uh, Gibbs over both those guys. I think I would yeah. trade Gibbs for Barkley right now, straight up. Jacobs, I'd have a little more wait, hesitation wait, for. Wait, you trade away Gibbs to get Barkley? I would trade away Barkley to get Gibbs. Okay, that's not what you said. But but you're not give you want to keep Jacobs. I think I might be keeping Jacobs. I mean, yeah, you're going back in years. I think Jacobs is is a year or two younger than Saquon. Um, still still playing pretty well. The Raiders have been a dumpster fire. He's been scoring you know relatively good points. I don't know if he'll stay there or has or isn't going to stay there. That'd be that'd be pretty close for me. I just Jacobs is a year younger than Saquon. Yeah, and if Saquon maybe wasn't in such and and hopefully Saquon gets to go on to greener pastures. Because I'd really like to see Saquon on a on a competent team. Because Saquon could have three fucking awesome years uh, yeah. still left in him. I'm just uh, you know uh, slightly concerned about how the rest of this year plays out and what the hell's going to happen uh, there. So all right, well, uh, Jacobs for you at all, or or is it is it clearly? Um, I think I've been remaining high on Jacobs uh, yeah. as much as anybody. Too so. high. No, I don't think it's too high. I I think it's really close. I mean, it's closer than what I thought as you asked that question. I, I my initial knee jerk reaction was Gibbs because of the age, but then looking, I forgot Jay, I forgot Jacobs is only twenty five, and uh, and when he gets the opportunity, like he, you know, like like this last you know Sunday, now that they've cleared house there, he, he's he's decent, man. He's he's a really really great running back. So I don't know. I think it's a coin flip. I don't think I would trade either one for the other, which tells me they're in the same tier. I don't think you could get Gibbs with Jacobs. I'll go send that today. You know? No, I, you don't, I, I'm, I'm not. I spe Jacobs, well, especially right now with, I think in, in two Let or Monty three weeks, and when Monty comes back, there may be somebody who gets a little more nervous about it going back to where it was. Um, right. I, I don't think you and, could either. And maybe no. Gibbs slows down I think a that's bit. more of a me thing than anybody else. And Jacobs is heating up. The team's rallying. It's more and, it's a more of a dynasty outlook, right? Is what your Casey's got more of a dynasty outlook and in a redraft outlook, which is what a lot of dynasty players play, including myself at times. I get I get caught up in the emotions of it, right? In a redraft perspective, I want Gibbs right now because of uh, you know, because of the hot fire. But but like you said, when Monty comes back, when things changes change a little bit in that offense, 
Jacobs may be in line for for a little bit more and um, the outlook of where Jacobs could go next year because he just signed a one year right it was yeah, just, franchise. just this year yeah yeah franchise yeah so so he could go somewhere and 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 who knows what his opportunity would look like so so there's enough mystery there that I think I'm I don't know. I, again, I guess it's a coin flip. I said all those words, and I just basically came back to the same conclusion. A boomerang back to the normal. All right. Well, let's keep it moving here. Let's um, let's let's, let's go to CJ Stroud here. I think we, it's been long enough. Let's give him his due here. Mm, just coming yeah. off breaking a rookie record and has been absolutely outstanding. The next gen stats from this game were bananas uh, for him. His rating in next gen was crazy. Uh, he put up all sorts of silly air yardage uh, uh, <laughs> numbers there. So you go check those out. Puts up 41 in the fantasy uh, area, which, you know, did not start C.J. Stroud this week. So that was a bummer. Um, but he's got to be skyrocketing up somewhat. I think we all felt pretty comfortable with him, but it's been, you know, he hasn't been putting up consistent, awesome fantasy numbers. He's been a little up and down as to be expected. I don't and nobody expected the Texans to be where they're at. Um, and, and kudos to Stroud. Um, everything you're seeing from him is is an indicator that um you know, he's going to be just fine. Will he be as, you know, everybody, of course, is you know, after this game is ready to put him in the top five of fantasy quarterbacks. I don't I don't know if I'm quite there yet. Um, I think he's good. Um, I'm probably still sticking with, uh, you know, at least the first five guys before I'm entering Stroud's name uh, in there. So I thought that would be a good little exercise with with Stroud. 30 for 42 QB seven overall 41.8 points this week. 470 yards, five touchdowns, um, and I believe the pick was on a two-point conversion, so that didn't that didn't count uh, right. against his numbers. So I think you're still sticking with Pat, Hertz, Allen, Burrow, and Herbert uh, for me. Definitely yeah. locked into those guys before Stroud. Um, feels like Burrow is basically kind of what you would want Stroud to be, um, and we've seen it from Stroud, right? I mean accurate passer who can elevate the offense but can have some scrambling ability and i think that's kind of what we we would so I, i'd see that as a lateral move if if at, i just know burrow's done it at a, at a high level for a much longer time so i don't see any room in there for stroud just yet do you big d no not not to leapfrog burrow how about lamar no not for me yeah probably still with lamar for me uh this is where you know t law it could start getting interesting right mm -hmm. oh yeah that could be interesting. I, I think I'm still leaning T Law, but but it's definitely an interesting conversation to have. How about uh, for Fields? Would you, uh, feels like I would just take. I would rather have the certainty of Stroud. Oh, for the Stroud's next, all day. X amount of years. Fields is probably going to put up better fantasy points for the next however long Fields is a star, you know starter a year and a half or whatever, and maybe right. he's a starter for ten more years and and just crushes fantasy points. It's never about the fantasy points with Fields. We know. That if he plays, the fantasy points are going to be fantastic. It's just right. how how long is it going to be? You know, I, I'm, I'm you're just not certain that that asset is going to stay a high end asset. How many chances? You know, b the Bears haven't certainly put him in the best you know situation to succeed. Once you move to the next situation, your leash gets shorter and shorter. Um, and 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 you know, then by the time you're you're on to the next one, it's like you know, a couple of bad games and all of a sudden you're yanked for, for somebody else and then you have to wait a little while to get back out there, it would seem. Um, yeah, right. I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty around Fields right now and what's going to happen right. with them next year in the draft. And is he going to be a, a starting quarterback? I'm, I'm sure he's going to get another shot, but it just right. feels like Stroud is just You don't have to take that. To you, another, could, you could eliminate all that. All, there's if, all the risks maybes. gone right. by just going with Stroud and looking, looking at what – this team's doing what he's doing the the ball that he throws is just incredibly beautiful right. just it's like it's like a laser right but, but with touch and on the run and deep and just like yeah. ice yeah, cold veins like there's no way they should have scored a touchdown 46 seconds left like yeah i mean well, that, that too take is his, plays and, his personality man he never boils over he never, you know what i mean he's just yeah. like whether it's the first play of the game or or that game winning drive that he did the dude just looks the same which is which yeah. is what you want in a leader you want that calm well not always but but in this particular case you definitely want that calm it's never like, bad to be yeah. no, calm all right. the time like right it was a slow start to the game too i mean they were down uh for for a good portion at least the ha first half and then you know i think 
you know, Dalton Schultz and, and came alive for him here. And, and he should have a nice little role moving forward. You know, Nico and, and tank look like they're, they're in sync. Noah Brown looked good coming second game back off IR. So, um, and that, you know, no Bobby Woods there and, and Mechie kind of coming along slow. So they, they have some parts and pieces and it's not out of the question that they add a, mo you know, some other monster, uh, in the right. off season because of how good Stroud is. Why not? Um, you know, yeah. Throw T Higgins over there. That'd be do, fun. Doing all this without a run game. There is no yeah. run game. They, they can't figure <laughs> yeah. out the run game. They can't get the run game going. And yeah. they're doing all this without a run game, which is super impressive. And I think that's something that they will eventually figure out, whether it's back half of the season or off season that, that, that they'll get that figured out. So um, well, one more question. Uh, a Rich or, or Stroud? You took the Rich. words right out of my... Two weeks in a I think Boom. it's A Rich for me still. What'd I you mean, say, Big just, he just saw how quickly the points pile up with a rich and that's what you just don't have with stroud is is the the ability of the legs which we know that's kind of what puts you over the top of that difference making fantasy quarterback week in week out don't you know he's right. already injury prone casey whatever we can't stay healthy yeah we can't stay healthy <laughs> sure. he's only played five games he's already hurt yeah and in those five games he fucking slayed fantasy points yeah it's funny he's leaving himself to injury he's injury yeah. prone He'll he's already right. got this label there's so many comments in on the youtubes about anthony richardson they're all mad every time we pick anthony richardson over anybody they're they're pretty mad they're like don't you know he gets hurt <laughs> and then like we're like yeah and then he gets hurt again and they're like well doesn't this change no no man it doesn't change anything we're good i'm good good like Keenan Allen used to be hurt for four straight seasons. Couldn't score a touchdown, couldn't play in the field. And now he's had like five straight wide receiver one seasons. Like Anthony Richardson is a mammoth of a man. And yeah. It, yeah, I mean, I think you take a little bit from this and say, oh, okay, all right. Hey, like, we, need, we need to just be a little less reckless. Um, right. You know, uh, bummer that you hurt your shoulder. Um, yeah, he's still 13th, by the way, uh, from weeks one through nine. <laughs> right. He's still 13th in rushing yards. Right. Uh, Anthony Richardson is. So, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely Richardson over him. Now, when you get to like Kyler Murray, mm -hmm. that one makes me that one makes me think a little bit. All right. Stroud you know? versus Kyler Murray. Yeah. Yeah. Where are uh, you at? I, gotta I, go Stroud. I like the legs of Kyler and I've seen Kyler be a five to eight. QB yep. five, QB eight when, when he's yeah. healthy and he's out there. Uh, we'll, we'll see what, well, how, how he feels about his legs, uh, kind of coming back here. Kyler Murray, that is five to eight. That's his height. <laughs> no, but that's where he, that's where he's been <laughs> fantasy output wise when yeah. he plays basically. Well, the first half of the um, season. I, well, I guess for me, like, or out the second half. They the don't. Season. It's just when he plays and when he's healthy. I, well, I, I love, I love that. I love that Kyle Murray has been a huge trade target for us since the beginning of since the off season mm -hmm. when we were doing drafts all off season over on patreon.com slash David dynasty developing our off season ADP. Like he was always a value and we had him, we just pounded it and now he's going to get the start this week. So it's probably too strong, strong, strong move by them by not bringing him back with the Browns. I kind of saw that no coming. Doubt. I was yeah. like, way to not way to just not bring your boy back. Yeah. Right in the middle of this dog shit. Like mm -hmm. he's already coming back from a long injury wh where he relies on his legs. Like, let's get, let's get out from this Browns game um, and see, see kind of what happens here. So smart. Yeah. Kyler gets interesting. I lean Kyler a little bit. I think I think Kyler will be a starter in the league for a while. So and I like and well, I like the legs. I don't know about you guys, but I I, I have a hard time putting Burrow and Herbert into tier one ever. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, even with great seasons and stuff, just because of the lack of the rushing upside, right? right. Like what Lamar and um, Mahomes to a point, he's he's kind of backed off a little bit, but but he still has some rushing. Um, he's Allen so hurt, frustrating. Mahomes, yeah, yeah. Know. Like what they've done, like I. They're definitely, uh, you know, they, uh, so I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I could see Murray getting healthy, coming back and, you know, performing at that, you know, five to six range pretty regularly where I can see Stroud, just like Burrow be in pocket passers. They got to rely on the personnel that's around them. Um, mm -hmm. there's not as much scrambling ability. So the, the floor is a little bit lower and, and that's not to take anything away from him as a, as a position or as a player yeah. themselves, Super but from safe, a fantasy, yeah, player. fantasy perspective, I think for me, those type of players, their ceiling is tier two in my mm -hmm. quarterback ranks. Um, yeah. And, and Burrow and Herbert can get up there. Both of them will run some Herbert. You've seen less since a few injuries, Mm -hmm. um and and burrow you saw a little bit more the last couple of weeks picking up those you know when you can get the 30 or 40 yards same thing with t-law like when they yeah. get those 
30, 40, 50, 60 yards and a rush touchdown that, that you know, all of a sudden, you know, they're up in those QB1 scoring weeks. Um, yeah. Or not the QB1 scoring weeks, but that, that top couple of QB scoring weeks. Um, so, yeah, I, I mostly agree with you there. Let's let's hit one more on the way out. Um, let's go Dak. And I think Gibbs had kind of re-solidified himself a little bit and Dak kind of maybe re-solidifying himself a little bit on this last little bit of run. I think um, – Keeping in the same vein of quarterbacks running around a little bit. Dak's been running around a little bit more. That brings the floor up from where we, we were so excited about Dak pre that terrible ankle injury that we saw from him. And, and he, yeah. I think he's just been playing really good football uh, the last couple of weeks. What we've seen from Dak has been, has been pretty impressive. Um, again, and the legs just being involved in keeping drives alive and sustained um, are absolutely huge. Um, you know, C.D. Lamb has been an absolute monster as well. So I think he kind of may be, uh, as well as Dak, on this rising back to solidifying a spot. C.D. Lamb may be silencing some some doubters as well a little bit here. So a little two for one for your plums uh, on the last skyrocketer. What's your thoughts there, Big D? Yeah, I agree. And I, I think this would be the exit stage left if I'm out on Dak. Like, not necessarily this last game, but I think the next few games he's going to have some amazing ability uh to to put up some points and so if you're out on Dak for whatever reason i'd hold them you know in the next couple uh, i mean you risk injury but but in general you you could hold them and then you could trade out and like like i might do the move for Dak for cj stroud if i at the contender has stroud and and um and you know after you know obviously not this week because <laughs> Stroud just went nuclear but in three weeks from now i could see Dak you know outscoring uh stroud in the next three series and and do a move like that so um I think he's definitely a riser. It's it feels good for him to kind of come back. I was pretty heavy on Dak and 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 CD um, in a lot of pieces. And um, but but I'll say that you know they they haven't kind of similar to what we said in other places. They haven't really established a run at all um, mm-hmm. as far as like Pollard hasn't you know he he's been doing okay. He hasn't got the touchdowns. You know there's been some the points in their favor as far as the passing game goes. Um, and we weren't sure what it was going to look like with um, Kellen, Kellen Moore. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, heading, heading out and, and it looks pretty good. So, so for me, I'm not saying to sell Dak, but if you wanted to sell Dak, if that was your, like, at one point you're like, Oh man, I just can't, I don't like consistency. I think your, your, your ability to do that in the next couple of weeks are, are going to be pretty high. Um, and I, I would pivot off of him for, for a Stroud. But as far as, um, just performance wise, I, I don't see him. I don't see him coming off of this high that he's got him or lamb in the next, you know, three to four weeks yeah. specifically because, uh, you know, they, they're, they're clicking right now. There's something, something to say about that. And they're, they're, um, they look really good. So, yeah, I think the Cowboys team that you saw against the Niners and the Cowboys team that you saw against the Eagles this last week, I think they're, they're, you know, somewhere in the middle of that, probably a little closer right now to what you just saw against the Eagles. Um, you know that uh, the that game against the Niners probably a little bit of an outlier. Just got a, got away from them, got on them, and you know it, it just kind of happens yeah. like that sometimes. So uh, you know, a lot of lot of um lot of doubts going on at that point with Dak and them. So I think that's a good point by you of saying if you wanted to get out, this 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 section here might be an option for you to get out. Um, but he's he's kind of climbed back in and resolidified himself. Uh, for me, for sure, there was a little bit of like, eh, I'm not so sure, but you know. Kirk Cousins was the same way. Everybody bagged on that guy about how he just stinks in his average, and it's like, no, nah, I think he, he's an above-average player, and I think Dak's an above-average player. Um, and if you get the running back into it, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I think Dak's fine for for he's thirty years old still. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, would you take Dak or is, is, is Kyler over Dak for me? But he's he's probably climbing right right in around that range, right? Yeah, yeah, I think he's right around that range. Two or uh, Dak. I think I'd still lean Dak. I think I would lean Dak too. Mm-hmm. Um, how about Deshaun Watson or Dak? Mm. Dak, easy for me. Deshaun, he he can almost be up the skyrocketing rise. He's a couple more games. If if Deshaun could 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 the stay zips. on the field and could could get a little bit of the clunkiness back out of the game a little bit. What's been nice with Deshaun is he hasn't even played that great, and the, the twenty point floor has been there because the rushing has <laughs> been back with. Yeah. With with Watson. Um, yep. You know, so he hasn't even played great and he's still, you know, put up 
pretty good fantasy points if he plays the full game for you. Um, so right. more importantly, this this past week he looked like he could make the throws he needed to make. Like it looked- somewhat, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, um, and a couple helmet helmet dings to yeah. to Amari <laughs> there. That was that? kind of fun. Oh, Amari Cooper, that's crazy down for your pleasure. <laughs> I think I'm I'd I'd probably go same tier right now with a slight lean towards Watson, but it's it's I'm a little more gun shy than I was about Watson. I just need to see I feel fine about it because I feels like the floor's there and he's not going anywhere as long as he's out there with him running around. But I just I, I want to see him clean it up. I need to have him see him have a couple of DAC like performances like right here to to really feel good about it. So um, Yeah. Also, just wanted to give a quick shout out to Jalen Tolbert here. Um, seems like he's climbing the ranks a little bit for the Cowboys. It seems like, yeah. you know, Brandon Cooks, they haven't gotten what they wanted out of him. Gallup has never really returned to where Gallup was. It doesn't look like Ferguson looks like the second guy in the pecking order. It looks like CD's going to crush. And then Tolbert's, you know, seems like he could be somebody who's who's kind of coming alive. So if you if you drafted Tolbert a year ago and everybody laughed at you, and he stunk up the first year. It looks like you're you're getting an, a window here of what could be with Tolbert. And there was a lot of buzz in the offseason of that. He kind of got it and was looking a lot better. And and here we are, you know, halfway through the season here and um, starting to look look like an NFL wide receiver out there. Uh, nice, nice scramble drill with with Dak on the touchdown for him uh, where he was kind of going back one way and then saw Dak release and he broke back the other way wide open, uh, scored a nice touchdown. So. A little bit of a rise for him. Uh, Ferguson definitely on the rise in the tight end spectrum. And, of course, Tank Dell uh, on the rise with with Stroud there. Um, you yeah. Know, had, had been injured a little bit um, and, and a couple of up-and-down games. And that's what you're going to have with Stroud right now. You're going to have these big ones, and then he might score 12 points next week in your lineup if you, if you throw him in there. Um, that's just what you're going to see from them uh, currently. So... Uh, just just a quick list of guys there. Some some other guys quickly on the na- on the on the uh, skyrocketing is 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 our guy Pop Douglas been staying on the uh, on the list of all of our lists of guys on the rise. Cole Komet uh, took a pie for him, but you know it's it's, it's post pie breakout um, <laughs> over here. And then I, we got we got to give some love to Josh Dobbs. He'll probably be on a five moves and make sure that we're gonna oh, do this week. Yes. But God, man. You can hate all you want, but man, Josh Dobbs has just come in in all sorts of funky situations and and put your team in a in a position to be uh, all right. The, the Tennessee playoff game last year, and then a late late uh, off season trade with him to the Cards, and then the Cards to the Vikes. Uh, you know, bummer for um, not not Hainer. Who who was uh, Hall? Who was in the uh, Hall? Jerron Hall. Uh, bummer mm-hmm. for him. He looked all right there. That was only one one or two drives, but. Seemed like he had, you know, had had something working there, uh, and then then concussed, uh, so a bummer. But what Dobbs just did was just so impressive, um, and and you know, all, still only twenty eight. I thought he was well into his thirties. It just seems like he should get a shot to be a guy somewhere where they give him, you know, at least the keys to the castle for a year or two, even if it's just a bridge situation. Well, he's getting strong backup money though, for sure. Regardless, right? I mean. It just seems like he he can he can really help you out. He can manage. Yeah, he's a poster poster uh, person of uh, a perseverance. You know those those posters that you see in like office settings and stuff, where it's like perseverance like and a, it's like a guy climbing up a mountain or something. Yeah, you could just yeah. put Dobbs face on that dude. He's 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 electric and he's he's um, when it comes to fantasy, he's a uh, he he's the reason why we like the rushing upside, man. I mean, he's leading the league in the last three weeks in rushing. I think he's number two or number three overall for the year in rushing yards, um, which just, it, you know, brings it, brings his floor up. I mean, he's, he's not, um, you know, I don't think we're saying he's going to be, he's going to compete with Kirk cousins. If Kirk cousins is healthy, right. No. Or, or Kyler Murray, if he would have stayed in Arizona, that's, that's not what we're saying, but man, he's a, he's a fun player. And if you lost Daniel Jones, I'd, I'd take a look at him, man. He's, There's he's a lot got of a guys similar... he just lost that you should probably take a look at the apps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, in the, particularly this last week, um, I, I, I've, I'm pretty heavily invested in, in Jones was really looking forward to him playing on the field with Saquon and, Obviously, that's not going to happen this week. So, um, or the year. Um, so, so Dobbs is somebody that I, you should be able to get for a for a decent price. And I, I really think he can be in the in a quarterback one. You know, uh, maybe in the eight nine um, range for you um, as far as ranks for the rest of the season. So, yeah. 
What do you got to give up to get dops? <sighs> Can't be much. I don't know. I'm going to try with a, a two thirds. I'm going to see if that works. Yeah. Could, could help you through some treacherous waters here. Uh, yeah. So just wanted to give them a little love before we get out of here. So uh, appreciate you listening. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, five-star reviews, $5 holler on the Discord, all that jazz. Get three extra episodes a month over there, plus access to the Discord. Uh, we're going to be firing up mock drafts, which we're doing right now. We're going to hit you with a 2024 startup mock uh, probably next week. we got a 2024 rookie mock uh, coming out probably next week. So be sure to stay tuned to all that stuff. And we, we appreciate everybody who's been riding with us all season and, and, and for, for years before that. So appreciate all you guys, and we'll uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Be sure to tune in for some commenters. Peace. Peace. <laughs>